Yo, what's up everyone? The Abigor here today. I'm back here for another banging video. And so today, I'm going to be talking about five of my controversial wrestling opinions. Now, um, this is a part two. Um, I made this video about over a year ago. I'd say probably like, probably like March or April or something like that. I'm not really not sure. Probably earlier than that, to be honest. But yeah, um, I did a part one. Uh, but that video is kind of outdated because I, I don't really know what I was talking about at the time, you know, when it comes to those opinions, but, um, I have some new ones and, um, I'm going to be backing up on, uh, you know, why I say these things and, you know, and all this stuff, but yeah. And also before we start, um, I just want to say, um, I heard about the news, uh, yesterday about Bray Wyatt, you know, rest in peace to Bray Wyatt, you know, um, I wasn't really a big fan of Bray Wyatt like that, you know? I always thought, you know, he was a bit overrated. But, you no, know, I'll give him credit where credit was due. You know, he was mad creative, man. Like, he was one of the most creative wrestlers I've seen. Like, you know, he was mad creative. And, you know, I respect him for that. You know what I'm saying? But, yeah, man, it's 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 sad to see him go, though. You know, he was only 36 years old. It's it's tough, man. It's, it's freaking tough. You know, rest in peace to Bray Wyatt, you know. And uh, hopefully he, uh, you know, hopefully his legacy lives on. But, um, yeah. Um, anyway, so let's uh, get into this video, though. So let's get it. All right. So number one, Daniel Bryan winning at WrestleMania 30 was the wrong call. Yes, I say that this was the wrong call in my opinion because of all these DB marks wanting him to win so much and stuff. And um, and they previously had you know that that Randy Orton and you no know, Daniel Bryan feud you know they started since uh, SummerSlam. And you know they came win the title back and forth. You know they came bounce the title back and forth. You no, know, but um. You know, when Batista came back, they literally ruined Batista's return. They literally ruined his return because, you know, he won the Royal Rumble. Uh, Randy was the champion at the time. You know, he chose Randy for WrestleMania 30. And Brian literally barged in the main event. Well, he did barge in until, you know, he beat Triple H at WrestleMania 30. And then, you know, he barged into the main event. And, you know, he, and then he won at the end. And it's it was so freaking stupid. I, I think it's the wrong call. And you definitely saw it was the wrong call also because of how the ring was. You know, the ring wasn't that great. And you know, had to ring he had to really close the title because you know he got hurt. And you know, that's why Vince didn't like, you know, he didn't like putting the title on smaller guys. Because, you know, he was injury prone at the time, man. You know, he wanted to put titles on guys that, you know, that are reliable to stay healthy and to be there when needed. And Daniel Bryan wasn't that guy. He wasn't that guy to be there when needed every single time because he was injury prone. So they ruined Batista's return because of all the DB marks saying that he should win, you know, WrestleMania 30 and he didn't win and it turned out to be disappointing. So, yeah, I mean, obviously everybody was there for the moment. Obviously everyone was there, you know, for... The Yes Movement and all that stuff, which was overrated to me. I, I wasn't really a big fan of the Yes Movement. Everybody was saying, yes, 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 and all that stuff. So, it it, it was ridiculous. You know, WrestleMania 30 was ridiculous. And, you know, it, it was freaking crazy. So, yeah, so that was my first one. I say Daniel Bryan winning the WrestleMania 30 was the wrong call. All right, so number two. Um, I'm going to go more to this one. Ticket sales does not equal a good show. And this is mainly going towards AEW and their Wembley stuff. Because I'm seeing all these AEW marks making excuse after excuse after excuse about Wembley, bro. Like, calm down. Every single time somebody says something bad about AEW, it's always, uh, uh, but, but Wembley sell 80k tickets, though. It does not matter, bro. We don't care about how many tickets you guys sold. We do not care. And ticket sales does not equal a good show. You keep... Just just because you sell a lot of tickets at a show doesn't mean it's going to be automatically good. It's not about how many freaking money or how many how many freaking tickets you sell or how much money you know you freaking made at that time. No, it's about putting on good shows and getting the most people to watch. So, if you buy those tickets and for you to have a disappointing show, then what's going to happen afterwards? Well, well, well. Okay, then. So, so you're telling me at WrestleMania 32. Um, you know, what he had 
Well, supposedly they had over 100k people at the stadium at uh at ATT Stadium. When he at WrestleMania 32, everybody was joining that show. Everyone was joining WrestleMania. Like, no, that was one of the most hated, one of the most hated WrestleManias of all time. You know what I'm saying? Especially because of the main event too, because you know Roman Reigns and Triple H for the WWE title. And obviously, you know, and Roman Reigns was one of the most hated guys on the roster at that time because, um, you know, because, you know, he was a Vince guy and anything that Vince likes, uh, the Marshall will hate because they, they hate Vince so much. I don't, I don't know why, even though Vince made y'all childhood and stuff, y'all still, uh, disrespect him. But yeah, ticket sales not equal to a good show. If the product of the show is not good, then the ticket sales is not going to matter. It's not going to matter at all. So, I gotta stop standing with this stuff to myself. Ooh, will Wembley sell 80k? It does not matter. And you're talking about Wembley selling 80k. It's crazy that y'all had to go international. AW had to go international for y'all to sell more tickets. It's ridiculous, bro. And y'all mainly doing shows in the US and stuff because that's where y'all mainly travel at. Why don't y'all say 80k um, in the US then? Why don't y'all do that? It's ridiculous, bro. And, you know, they never really had shows, you know, in a big... I don't, I don't think they ever have a show in a big stadium in the U.S. I don't think they have. They just, you know, had their, their pay-per-views in, like, Dub or nothing, or Arthur Ashe Stadium, at least. But still, if AEW was to have a show um, as big as All In in the U.S. in a football stadium, y'all really think y'all sell those same 80, 80K tickets? And if y'all did sell those 80k tickets, how would the show be? How would the pay-per-view be? Because so far, All In is not that good. It's really not that good of a car right now. And y'all over here, because like I said, they had months of planning this this pay-per-view out. But they chose it to the last minute. And y'all were complaining the same thing about Vince. You know, y'all were talking about, oh, Vince is waiting to the last minute to book some pay-per-view matches. AEW is literally doing the same thing. And y'all just letting it slide. Like, come on, man. No. Like, where's the, where's the consistency in that? Why don't y'all don't call out AEW for that? If Vince was doing the exact same thing when he was booking the show. Come on, man. Like, wrestling fans need to be... They need to be, be more consistent when it comes to complaining. Because if you're going to complain about one thing, you might as well complain about the other. Complain, complain about it all together. Don't just complain about WWE because y'all hate WWE. Y'all love AEW. Like, no. It does not work like that. But yeah, ticket sales does not equal a good show. It does not equal a good show at all. It's all about the, the the quality of the product and how good the show is. So yeah. Um, opinion number three. Kenny Omega is the most overhyped wrestler in the past decade. And no, this is literally some of the stuff I said in my last video. Like, what is so great about Kenny Omega? What is so great about him? And the Young Bucks too. And Kenny Omega's matches... It's repetitive, too, because if you've seen one Kenny Omega match, you pretty much seen them all. Because it's literally the exact same stuff, man. Same thing with the Young Bucks, man. But I'm I'm only really talking about Kenny Omega here. It's not really about the Young Bucks. I'll talk about the Young Bucks another time. But still, Kenny Omega, what is, what is so special about him? Please tell me what's so special about him. Because what? Because he puts on five-star matches? Have you guys forgot that work rate does not matter? It does not matter in wrestling. Come on, man. And y'all think that rest, even though you know it is wrestling, wrestling is not the only thing that's going to make you succeed. You know, you got to have character work, character development. Yeah, character development. Uh, you know, promo skills and all this stuff. And, you know, character work. You know, if you have more than all that, you know, then you're really going to succeed. But just the wrestling part by itself? No, bro. No. And all these, you know, the, this hardcore stuff. And, you know, for AEW. And, you know, for Tony Khan to have all of these, you know, all of these, uh, these freaking, giving me all these freaking title matches to, to the elite. Because... They love the everybody loves the elite so much, right? Like, come on, bro. 
and y'all freaking adding Kenny Omega to all these uh title freaking matches and stuff and for WWE wrestlers. Y'all are talking about some oh Kenny versus Roman, Kenny versus Seth, Kenny versus Steary, Kenny versus uh Bray Wyatt. I saw somebody uh freaking posted that freaking dumb stuff. Uh like literally all the freaking dumb stuff, man. It's ridiculous, bro. Absolutely ridiculous. Like, why? Like, why y'all putting Kenny Omega in these in these random matches that y'all know damn well y'all not going to see anywhere in the freaking future? Anywhere. Y'all not going to see that a day in y'all lifetime. And if Kenny Omega was to go to WWE, he would be a freaking jobber. This man would be a jobber. He would not survive in no WWE. If he's complaining about Marks hating him and, well, not Marks hating him, no, but Casuals hating him on his freaking Twitter and stuff, he's not going to survive in WWE. He's not. He's going to be booked like a jobber. I don't think Triple H is that dumb to sign somebody this marky. But Triple H, you know, he was signing people from the Indies, you know, in NXT and everything. But that was mainly because of their hype also. But still, Kenny Omega, man, he could stay away. This man could stay away, bro. So, yeah, that was opinion number three. Kenny Omega's most overhyped wrestler of the past decade. And I still stand by that, okay? All right. Opinion number four. Tony Khan is the worst booker of all time. Yes, I still stand by this after, you know, I made that Tony Khan video on him uh, uh, last year. I said that Tony's the worst broker of all time. People will call me stupid and dumb for that, but it doesn't matter. I still stand by this, and I still believe that Tony Khan is the worst booker of all time. Not just in AW, no, of all of wrestling, all of the wrestling world. Worse than Triple H. And Triple H not, is not doing that great either lately. He's not doing that great either. Like, have you not seen the type of nonsense Tony has booked ever since AEW started? Come on, man. You added all of these all of these titles for you to not do anything with them. And it's not being elevated to be, you know, important. How does the trios titles feel important right now? How does the all Atlantic title feel important right now? And what about Chris Statlander? After what's the last time she showed up on TV? What in the world? This girl won a TBS title. She had a couple defenses, and she's just gone, gone for weeks. What what is happening? Twenty just really he really does not know what to do with the women's division, man. He really doesn't, and he just loves shoving Britt Baker down your throats. Britt Baker, one of the most green wrestlers on the roster. Come on, man! Y'all complain about y'all complain the same thing about WWE. Also, where's the consistency in this? How come y'all was complaining about uh, y'all was complaining about John Cena and Roman Reigns being shoved out your throats when no, when it was going full time? Where's the consistency in this? How come y'all don't come out AEW for shoving Britt Baker down your throats? She was literally getting title match after title match after title match. And y'all still let it slide. Like, it's ridiculous. Like, stop. And what's so special about Britt Baker? I'm telling you, like, AEW has some of the most overrated wrestlers. Like, oh, my God. Man, so much for so much for indie wrestlers, right? Oh, my God. And here's, and here's how I still stand by this, that Tony Khan is the worst booker of all time. There is no way... You book MGF and Adam Cole in the zero hour of All In, the pre-show of All In before this, before the freaking show takes place. So you're telling me that they're going to be um, doing two uh, matches on the same night, on a pay-per-view, by the way, a pay-per-view. I mean, it was like a, you know, a regular Dynamite or something because WWE has done the same thing in the past. You no, know, they have, you no, know, they have wrestlers uh, wrestle twice in the same uh Show, you know, like on SmackDown stuff, okay. But on a pay per view, bro, and on the biggest pay per view right here, right here, right here, this is supposed to be a big deal. And you're having two of your biggest stars, 
Um, going for our waist titles, by the way. Like, come on. And then y'all going to make them go in the main event. Uh, probably still freaking be hurting and stuff because there's no way you're going to recover in a couple hours, especially after you wrestle a match. A tag team match that's you know that's going to be long as hell because you know AW loves uh long wrestling matches, especially tag team matches. Because oh my god, and um, I remember like a month ago, uh, on my part three of my AW sucks video, I mentioned that uh that two out of three uh false uh tag team match that happened, and that match was almost an hour long. It, it took up half of the freaking show. Uh. Basically, it was that was freaking stupid. So yeah, man, Tony, this man does not know what he, what he's doing when it comes to booking, bro. Like, it's it's freaking stupid, man. All right, uh, last opinion. CM Punk is still not a draw. I will forever stand by this. I would never change my opinion about this. CM Punk is still not a draw. He has never been a draw, and he never will be a draw. He wasn't a draw in WWE. He definitely wasn't a draw in the UFC. And he wasn't a draw now. Or he, he isn't a draw now. Because first look at Collision. What has he done for Collision? The highest viewers y'all gotten was 800k. That was on the first week y'all debuted on, on Collision. And the worst part about religion is it's on a Saturday. It's on the weekend. People have stuff to do on the weekend. And you're telling me, well, it's tough for like people that go to school and stuff, I guess. But so you're telling me that people are going to tune into wrestling on the weekend? The only time people will really tune into wrestling on the weekend is like if it's a pay-per-view going on the weekend. But for a regular show that's going to be airing every week on Saturday, that's dumb. I could say Thursday, but by that point they're going to be competing with uh with Impact, so I don't want to say Thursday. But I don't, I don't, but at the same time, there's really no other option either. But still, it's it's dumb. And Collision, you know, it still has potential. And you know, I still say you know it would be much better than Dynamite, and it, there were no future more people in the show. But still, what has CM Punk done for this show? And I'm pretty sure I saw that uh that botch that happened uh last uh on, on the last collision when uh we tried to hit the GTS on uh on Samoa Joe. While he was wearing that uh that that, that little gold suit, what whatever that was. That was that was retarded. And you know, the lowest views I gotten was uh what's that two hundred uh fifty uh K uh viewership that I talked about in another previous video that I talked about about collision. And that's really like close to like it's like double uh impact numbers and it was around Rampage's numbers. And Rampage's not even interesting anymore either. I don't know why why they're still doing Rampage right now, but yeah. You know CM Punk the CM Punk hype is over, you know CM Punk is not that interesting. He's never he never was interesting, man. And you know, this guy, people be overrating this guy so so much. And this guy, man. Oh my god. This dude CM Punk. It's your boy CM Punk back at it again, y'all. Oh my God. CM Punk will forever not be a draw. Whatever he does in the show is not going to be worth anything. And it's not going to be worth it for these for these neck beards that freaking watch wrestling all day, every day. So, yeah, man. Um, that's pretty much it. Uh, that's my five. Of my controversial wrestling opinions. Uh, pretty much unpopular wrestling opinions. And um, yeah. Um, comment down below. Uh, what 
a popular wrestling opinion do you have? And, you know, what do you think about, you know, the Bray Wyatt passing us everything that happened? And, uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, I'll see you guys later. Peace.